Hey everybody, it's Andrew again, your average jeweler. Today we are talking opals. And opals are by definition one of the most phenomenal gemstones there is. So let's get right into it and talk some opal. Or maybe we're talking about opal. Actually, I think it's opal. Let's figure this out. So opals actually come in many different colors, many different forms, and many different shapes. So to make sense of all that, we have to answer a few questions. But first of all, let's talk about what is opal. So to start, opal is by definition an amorphous silica. And what does that actually mean? Well, first of all, there are lots of silicates, lots of gemstones with a silicone chemistry to them, but opal's a lot different. Opal actually is amorphous so that different from a lot of crystalline gemstones, it doesn't have a specific structure that it's building off of. A lot of gemstones deal with a very specific structure. You think of diamonds and how organized their chemical structure is. Opals are not. Opals are a stereotypic example of having no real crystalline structure which is one of the things that makes them so special. So with these characteristics in mind, opal is actually classified as what they call a mineraloid. Yeah, that's a real word. A mineraloid means that it's not technically a typical mineral with that chemical structure that we're used to seeing. So a lot of times when you see opal, you'll hear people talk about the matrix or what it grew in. It's a common term that we'll use with turquoise. Turquoise is something commonly shown with its matrix, the stone that it actually grew in. And some of those stones include limite, sandstone, uh, marl, basalt. Those are just a few examples and they become more relevant depending on the type of opal we're talking about. So keep that in mind as we get further into this this discussion. We are going to talk about what makes opal unique and phenomenal, but for now let's talk about the different types of opal because that's really important. Number one out of what are really, I'm going to say there's four main types of opal and there's a little bit of discussion on that point. It's not dogmatic because as you'll see when we talk about opals, there's some overlap within certain types of opal, and others are very clearly a different type of opal. So the first type of opal we're talking about is black opal. This is by far the most rare and valuable variety of opal. Generally when we talk about black opal, we're talking about the backdrop color. So it would be pretty boring to see an opaque black stone and call it a phenomenal gemstone. That's not really how it works. There's a lot of black gemstones that people enjoy and appreciate, but opal would not be one of those. So when we say black opal, we're not talking about the whole gemstone being black, again, boring. We're talking about the backdrop color of that gemstone being black in color. And why that's so interesting and unique is it makes all those other colors pop. If you have all of these colors going on within opal and they're over a, a dark backdrop, the colors are that much more obvious and they're gonna show up really nice. And it's one thing that people desire and are going to want, but again, very rare, and because of that, very expensive. These black opals are almost exclusively found in Australia, and some famous mines that you'll occasionally hear of, Lightning Ridge would be one of them. Um, Lightning Ridge is a primary source for black opals, and it's one of the few places on Earth that they find them. Again, this adds to the rarity of a gemstone like black opal and hopefully gives you some more context into why it's such an interesting gemstone. The second type of opal variety is, in contrast, white opal. Now white opal, I would argue, is probably the most popular variety of opal within the United States. And that's for a few reasons. The biggest one, as we talked about with black opal, is going to be price. White opal is less expensive, so much less expensive, compared to your black opals. And that's because it's obviously more readily available, but it doesn't have the same color saturation 
generally speaking. You're not going to get that same contrast from a whitish background than you are from a very dark background. Now I want to take a moment and talk about how there is a lot of in-between in there. Between black and white, there's a lot of gray area. And with that gray area, you can have opals categorized as gray opal. So that's one of the reasons I say not everyone agrees on when you try and label these opal varieties because there is a little bit of carryover when you talk about that backdrop color and that makes a big difference with some people when they want to talk about what makes an opal an opal. So let's talk white opal. White opal by definition has a white, usually an opaque white, background. And white opals don't always have that vibrant play of color that we're accustomed to seeing, but some of them can. Just like with anything, it does make a difference in that overall price. When I say black opals are much, much more expensive, we're talking generalizations because there are qualities of white opal that can be really nice, and of course they're going to be more valuable than an opal that looks almost all white or milky. This is a good time to talk about phenomenal factors. And being a phenomenal gemstone, opal has these beautiful play of colors, but technically not all, all opals do. Not all opals are considered phenomenal gemstones. They can have that chemical structure, but they don't have to show the phenomenon of colors changing and moving and just kind of bouncing off each other. Some opal is just plain. It doesn't have anything interesting about it, and these would be non-phenomenal opals. So there is a distinction there as well. Again, I'm trying to help you understand all these different ways that we look at opal. Because we simplify so many things, opal's a perfect example of that. So your white opal is going to be a more affordable option, and some of it can be very vibrant and phenomenal. So that's the second type of opal. The third type of opal continues to relate to that backdrop color, and that would be what some people call jelly opals or translucent opals, and it's the idea that the, the backdrop or the base color of that stone is actually somewhat translucent, and maybe even some cases considered transparent. So you have a more translucent gemstone that you can kind of see all the way through, but when you turn and you move that gemstone, you get these beautiful play of colors. Ethiopian opal is maybe our best example of that. Ethiopian opals, they've been finding them quite readily for the past decade or more, and they have a translucent backdrop, sometimes yellow and orange in tone, but they can have beautiful play of color. We're talking much, much more color than you see in a lot of white opals. So Ethiopian opal can be a fantastic option. With that in mind, they do categorize it a little bit differently, and it doesn't come without a few negatives. So they talk about these opals being what we say hydrophanous, and that's a big word for saying how much more water content and how much less stable something like these gemstones are. All opals have water in them, some of them far more than others. Hydrophanous opal have a lot more water in them, and that does make them a little bit of a concern when it comes to stability. We actually have certain opals like this that come from Ethiopia, and it's not uncommon to see them with disclaimers saying, be much more careful to soak them in liquids, even putting them in water. So again, while all opals have a porosity to them, hydrophanous opals are much more porous, and because of that, need a little bit more caution. Most of these things they're not going to be exposed to on a general basis, but you need to be aware of it. It is a pretty big downside to these, but considering the cost and considering the price you can get them for, they are worth considering. There's beautiful opals that fall into this category. The fourth main category of opals I want to talk about is actually that of fire opal. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I've seen fire opal. They look like a lot of things that you're talking about. I don't understand why this is a separate category. Well, I've also seen a lot of people describing certain synthetics or maybe even doublet opals, which we're going to talk about in a second, so stay tuned. 
they've used this word fire opal as a marketing term to try and describe how much color that they have. Oh, we have a fire opal, and they use it as a marketing term when in reality there is actually an opal variety called fire opal that is completely different. And what true fire opal is, is actually a more crystalline-like gemstone. It has that same opal chemical structure, but it looks much more like a common gemstone. It's oftentimes clear, at the very least translucent, and it can come in bright, vibrant colors, most traditionally oranges and reds. Sometimes you get into yellows. But it's an interesting one because you get a very different look from what is still opal. Now again, just like we talked about with hydrophane opals or hydrophanous opals, you have a little bit more concern than you would with other natural gemstones that can come in these colors. It's still opal, so it still has some characteristics that make it very soft. Opal is a softer gemstone. It doesn't have that hard chemical structure, and because of that, it does make it an easier stone to scratch, and it does have that porosity that we talked about. So keep that in mind. It's not something you would really want to consider putting in a ring, but as earrings, as a pendant, it's really a super vibrant stone. And I encourage you to go find some if you haven't seen any already. You'll often hear people say Mexican fire opal because Mexico is a common place, a common locale where they find this type of gemstone. So we talked about the four main categories of opal, but I didn't include what we consider composite opals or synthetic opals in there. And that's something I want to touch on a little bit. Composite opals fall into a couple categories, and a composite gemstone just means that they've assembled it. And sometimes you'll more accurately hear the word, an assembled opal. So what they've taken is they've used some kind of stone on the bottom, possibly they're using jasper, agate, onyx, something of that effect, and they put a thin piece of opal over top of it. And that does a few things. Sometimes the actual glue or cement that they use to put them together is dark, but many times the stone they use underneath is dark. So it gives it a very similar look to black opal, which, as we discussed, much more expensive. So you can get these beautiful colors and you can get black opal-like stones for a far lower cost. Because again, they're not using a lot of opal in the process. You actually, outside of doublets, you have triplets, which as the name implies, has three layers. So they have those traditional layers that we spoke of, but many triplets will have some kind of a glass or resin top to it. And it gives the stone a more dome-like feel, more like a traditional opal, because most opals are cut into a cabochon shape, so they're rounded or domed on the top. And it helps to accentuate what makes opal phenomenal. I almost forgot to talk about a very important type of opal, and I can't believe I technically left it off the list, so consider this a little bit of a bonus section, if you will, but I wanted to mention boulder opal. Boulder opal is oftentimes looked at similarly to black opal because it can look almost just like it, but it's technically opal that runs between or into the matrix and it's left in that natural matrix that we talked about. I don't know how I almost forgot about talking about boulder opal with you, but boulder opal is quite fascinating, and it's one of the more unique varieties of opal, if you can say that, because all opals are characteristically unique, but boulder opal is interesting just because of the fact that depending on how it runs and makes these veins, as you will, into its matrix, you can come up with all kinds of different patterns. Sometimes boulder opal can almost look, as I mentioned, like black opal if the opal itself is more or less on the surface and there's not a lot of matrix showing, and then underneath is mostly matrix. But most of the time you're going to see pieces of opal, or like I mentioned, veins of opal, that run through whatever this rock matrix is, and you're left with a very unique opal. Again, I don't know how I almost forgot about it, but I definitely wanted it to be on the list. So even though I mentioned there being four types of opal, there's more realistically five types of opal because I include boulder opal within that category 
of a variety of opals. Before we get into answering that question, what makes opals phenomenal, we also are going to touch on synthetic opals. And just like every other gemstone we talk about, there's some kind of an imitation or many different types of imitations and different varieties of synthetics. Opals are no exception. They have come up with a lot of different ways to imitate opal. Some of them are more obvious than others like anything, but certain varieties of synthetic or lab-created opal can be very convincing. So just be aware of it when you're shopping for opal. Get it from a source that you can actually trust. A lot of online sources do not do a good job at disclosing this, so be really careful when you're looking for opal and pay attention to those key words or phrases that they might use to describe it. Most synthetic opals, I should say, are not going to be your black varieties. The black varieties of synthetic opal, again, are usually a bit more obvious or they're some kind of assembled stone. Now that we've talked about the different types of opal, I'm curious to know what kind of opal did you identify with most as being opal? And maybe you knew several of these varieties already, but I find most people that I talk to have one specific variety of opal that in their minds they said, that's opal. When realistically, there's a lot of them. So please tell me in the comments below. You might know, you might not already know, but interacting in those comments does help other people to see these videos. So tell me below, what do you actually identify with opal or what did you identify with opal? All right. So I already told you we're going to talk about what actually makes opals phenomenal. You've probably heard me say that a dozen times now. Opals are a phenomenal gemstone, but they get their color in a much more unique way than any other gemstone. In fact, it fascinates me and it blew my mind when I first started learning about opal, where they get their color from. Now opals, as we mentioned, are an amorphous silicate. So their chemical structure is not totally predictable. They can grow in very interesting ways, but what does make them interesting is they almost always grow in little spheres. So when you look at an opal in, in under a microscope, you look at an opal and you get down to its chemical structure, you start seeing little spheres that stick together and they pile on top of each other. And this is interesting and it relates to the phenomenon because when light hits those different spheres, it bounces off at different angles. And when it hits a sphere of a different size or if it hits a sphere in just a slightly different location, that angle is going to be different. And it's the angle that the light bounces off the stone that creates different colors. In fact, almost every color has a specific angle at which you see it. So when we're seeing an opal move and we're seeing the colors change, we're actually seeing the light bouncing off those little tiny spheres at different angles and how our eyes interpret it is different colors. Again, I think that's one of the most fascinating things about opal and it really intrigued me when I first discovered that because most gemstones don't function on that premise. Most gemstones actually have different elements that get in there and overall they affect the color. Opals really are phenomenal. So I just want to say, if you haven't seen these different varieties of opal, I encourage you to go see if you can find them in person. They really are fantastic. You're really fortunate if you can come across a nice selection of genuine black opal because it is quite rare. But you might be able to find some doublets, some white opal, some Ethiopian opal, some fire opal. Those are probably all in a local jewelry store around you and I really encourage you to go check them out. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. It really helps us as we keep moving forward. Like the videos, comment below. These all help a lot and I appreciate you watching. I hope you'll keep learning.